Hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. On today's video, we're going to take a look at this little Panasonic TV that I showed on a Super Mini Mail Call on the second channel. I'll put a link in the description to it if you haven't seen the video about this TV. One of the problems with this TV is, while it works fine, is it only has RF input, hence the two tuner knobs here. I think this thing would be a lot more useful if I had a composite video input on it. So, on today's video, I'm going to add a composite input to this TV. So without further ado, let's get right to it. This little Panasonic TV is just so chunky and awesome looking. I want to be able to use this a little bit more, especially because it's just so easy to move around because it's portable. And of course it runs on DC 12 volts, means it's very easy to power with any old 12 volt power supply that's lying around. So this RF only input was a product of its time and certainly was normal for back then, but it just means that it's really hard to use this TV these days, especially with the use case of what I want to use it for, which is retro computers. So I think it really is logical to add the composite input to this thing to make it more usable and for me to more likely to actually use this thing and not just have it sit on the shelf and collect dust. I'm just gonna start removing the screws on this set. Now I will talk about something. Um, lots of people say when I'm working on these old TVs or monitors that I should RGB mod it or composite mod the TV. And I often write this in the comments, uh, but a lot of times that is just not possible to do cheaply or safely. And really the reason for that is a lot of these sets, well, the larger versions at least, run on mains power and don't have an isolated power supply design. That means on those sets, if you take the plug, it's a two prong plug, a two pin plug, and you stick it in the wall, you are relying on the fact that you are using a polarized plug to make sure that metal things on the outside of the case, now not the antenna jacks, because those have a transformer, but say I added a composite jack, the ground, which would be connected to the chassis ground of the set, could potentially be live at mains voltage if you plug the plug in the wrong way. I don't have to say, of course, that that would be extremely dangerous. And even if I go and add a three prong plug to the set, so you can't reverse it, you're still relying on the wall outlet to be wired up correctly. And that's just not 100% certain. So when you look at computer monitors, for instance, ones that have composite input and ones that are from this time period, those computer monitors, at least the ones I've always seen, always use a transformer inside to take the mains voltage, bring it down to some other voltage, and then there's a little power supply that generates the B+. When you have a transformer, everything inside the set is now completely isolated from mains voltage. And no matter how you turn the plug around, there's just no danger of you getting a shock. Now a set like this, it already runs on, I'm sorry, I'm just looking for all the screws here. Are there any on the back? No, it doesn't appear there are. A set like this runs on DC. There's no AC at all involved with this set. So that means that you're pretty much safe to go ahead and add a composite mod. Okay, so I bet you these knobs here have to come off to get the back cover off. There we go, you just pull them out. I'm gonna try using the little spudger here to help. And how about these down here? Oh, nice, okay. You have to have strong fingers to get these knobs off. So sometimes a little tool goes a long way to help. There we go. This bottom one had a little plastic spacer of sorts. And interesting is the top part of these knobs is actually rubber. See, it's kind of squishy. In fact, no, the whole thing is kind of rubbery, kind of neat. And it's nice that that rubber is not solidified. Okay, so let's see, does this come apart? Oh yeah, look at that. That was the, <laughs> that was the key right there. All right, so there's a couple wires here because this is the speaker and there's a headphone jack there. So I'm assuming these connectors come right off. So there's one. All right, and the other one, there's a connection inside the case. All right, so here is the design inside this thing. 
So a little CRT neck board. It's just so super cute. Look at this little five inch black and white CRT. I love it. One thing that is totally coming across by inside this set is it's really, really clean inside. Now it's, it's very likely that a set like this never got used very much because of course, who's watching a ton of TV on a five inch TV? Not a lot of people. But the flyback transformer here is, well, there's a little bit of soot on it, but it's really clean compared to what you might expect. Continuing to look inside, you see this metal can here, and there's another metal can right there. Those are, of course, the tuners for this set, which uh, translate to the knobs on the front there. I'm not going to be touching these or taking them out, but the tuners feed down to this board down here at the bottom, which will be taking the RF signal that's coming through the tuners and then decoding that into a video signal. And then this board right here, which is loose because all the screws are out, that board will be taking the video signal from the tuner and then turning that into something that can be displayed on the monitor. So it'll handle decoding the sync signals from the composite signal and then doing the deflection and then also doing the cathode drive to create an actual image. Almost certainly Panasonic did something like this because the tuners and this uh, IF board probably are going to be slightly different from one region to another. And that way uh, that you could just still use the same video board here, at least for NTSC regions, to display a picture uh, and just swap out the tuner section. Now, as far as audio goes, and I haven't really talked about that, so the speakers here and the headphone jack, notice here there's sort of yellow and black wires here that go to this connector. That connector went to this connector here down on this IF board, on the tuner board. So I'm pretty certain it's this tuner board down here that is generating the audio and has the amplifier on it. And I don't want to modify this monitor too much in case I ever want to restore it back to the way it was. So I'm probably not going to be doing audio for input on this thing, just video. I got to give props to Panasonic for a pretty nice layout here. The inputs to this board are up at the top here and we have the various sections that are labeled. So I went and bought the Sam's Photofax schematics for this set. And I'll, I'll show that in a second. But I want to see by just looking around here if I could figure out potentially a way to do this mod without even having the schematics. Like say I couldn't find the schematics. So down here on the tuner board, there's this connector right here. Now this is just going to the tuners here. So we know that that is just an RF connection for, for these things. But I need to look at what connects the tuner board up to this board. And I see some connections right here. And it looks like those run down here. Now, when I look up here at the top at these wires coming from the tuner, there's something here that gives away what might be the video signal that I want to tap into. Let me just snip off this zip tie here so it can get better access to the wires. So ignore this red wire, which says B1. That might be like B plus, like voltage or something. Take a look at this wire here, sort of a brown purple wire. It's shielded. So E1 is a shield, and then there's a white center that comes out here, C9. Almost certainly this is going to be the video signal that comes from the tuner board up to this board. Outside of RF signals inside TVs, there's very little reason to have a shielded wire for any other purpose other than video. Back here where these wires are connecting, this is the volume control and also the power switch for the TV. And that red wire is coming off of this, going up to that top board. So almost certainly that's gonna be the main power, like the DC input that is going up to this board. Anyhow, I think I might be in luck that these video wires are so easily accessible right here because this mod might be as simple as hooking this up to an RCA jack that I screw into the back of the case potentially with a capacitor to block some DC voltage, stuff like that. We'll, we'll have to measure and, and take a look at what, what we see on this wire. Here is the Sam's photo fact for this model TR555 from Panasonic. Okay, scrolling down, originally this photo fact, if you had the actual paper, would have been one giant sheet, so really easy to look at. And unfortunately, uh, they split it when they scan it. Would be nice if they didn't do that. These are the tuners here, and then it outputs here and then comes in right here, I think, IF from tuner. So there's all the tuning and the decoding and whatnot that happens. Anyhow, onto the second page of the schematics here. So this section right here is tuner-related stuff, and what's going on right here is what we're looking for. 
test point 13 on the tuner board. Notice here, C6, there's a white wire, and see this little loop to ground? That is that browned cable up here that I was talking about with the shielding. That is what's going on right there, and that is almost certainly the video signal. And it comes into that analog board, into this analog board here, it goes through a resistor and it splits off. And this wire that's going off down here was going to that sync section we were looking at before, the sync separator. But this with the video signal continuing on, there's a 4.5 megahertz filter. And it says right here that the amplitude is about one volt peak to peak, which is correct for a video signal. That's typically what NTSC is, one volt peak to peak. So I have to say there's a good chance that from a level perspective, the input on this board is already matched and expecting a regular video signal. Now this 4.5 megahertz filter is gonna be here to try to remove like chroma information from the video signal, uh, because of course this was out when color TVs existed. So to prevent that dot crawl you get on NTSC, they installed this filter. And looking at the board here, this green thing is almost certainly that filter. I'll have to just check the part number there. It says X141. And on the back, yes, it's the green thing that says X141. So I'm gonna have to remove that part to bring back the sharpness of this set because with that in place, it's gonna be pretty soft when trying to display any graphics from a retro computer. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the white wire and this grounded cable. So this should come out. There we go. So that video signal that comes from the tuner should be disconnected now. And while I'm here, I'm gonna remove this filter as well. And I think what that does is anytime there's part of the signal that's over four and a half megahertz, it just sends it to ground. Now, as far as a cable to bring that video signal from the back of the case, which I'm gonna to have to install jack to this point, I'm gonna use this, which I saved out of an old CRT or an old monitor. And these are shielded coax type cables. So very similar uh, to the one that was on here. So I just stripped some of the wire off, you notice there, there's the shielding and the center conductor uh, will be carrying the video signal. And this just helps eliminate interference on that cable. Cool, just like that, it's connected up. And I'm just gonna apply some heat shrink onto this uh, existing cable from the tuner so it doesn't short out to anything. So let me strip off the end of this and we need to test this. I mean, maybe I'm on the wrong track here and this isn't even gonna work at all anyways. So I went and grabbed a 75 ohm resistor. I'm just gonna connect it between the input and ground. This resistor in the monitor, along with one that's in series in the device you're connecting, create a voltage divider, which is also part of the termination of the video signal. This RCA cable here comes from the test pattern generator, my Tektronics. Okay, we're all clipped in and we're ready for testing. Moment of truth time. Are we gonna get a nice, clear video signal or are we gonna get something that looks like garbage? Uh-oh. Okay, I'm getting absolutely nothing here. Nothing at all. Interesting. Sometimes it's a good idea just to rule out that your connections aren't a problem with the cable or whatever. So why don't we, uh, Plug this into this Apple monitor here. Okay, and it turned out the cable I was using was bad. Uh, here we are connected to the monitor. Now we have a nice, sharp and clear picture there. There it is. So let me clip on again and try this one more time. Hopefully <laughs> I haven't gone down the wrong path with this, with this monitor. Okay, we do not have a good picture. Okay, interesting. Oh, wait. When I unplug the resistor, we do get an image. Although I gotta say it looks horrible. There are retrace lines completely visible in the entire image for some reason. And if I hook up the 75 ohms, it does just completely blank it out. Okay, as you can see, I have an image here on the set again, but this is actually hooked up again through RF. I removed that heat shrink on the wire and I clipped it all back together because I'm doing now what I should have done from the very beginning. I should have looked at the signal that comes out of the RF stage before it goes to the analog board. Because even though we have that picture, it was really too dark. Now here is the video signal coming through that coax wire 
up to the analog board from the tuner, and you'll notice that this red mark here is ground and that the video signal is far above ground. Now basically it looks like what was happening is that the analog board, I'm calling it the analog board, this board on the side, expects to see a video signal that's about two volts above ground. So if we look back at the schematics here, there's where I cut. This stage right here seems to be where that DC offset is coming from. So one possibility is I could attach the video input signal over here on this side of this transistor. The problem with doing that though, is it would invert the signal. You can kind of tell that's happening. Look here at this uh, a little oscilloscope graph here. You see the lines are up near the top. And if we scroll over here, here on this other stage here, they're down near the bottom. Incidentally, on the emitter right here of that transistor, you can see here 2.38 volts, which pretty much matches what we're seeing here on the output of it. So what I need to do is figure out how I can apply a DC offset to that input video signals of around two volts, and then we should have a good picture. All right, take a look at that. We have a really, really nice image. And this is a video input directly from the pattern generator. And it looks perfect now. Now let's take a look at the oscilloscope here. Notice we now have the entire video signal a little bit above ground. Well, it's about a volt above ground and that makes the monitor very happy. Now I am supplying the extra voltage, which is four volts right now from my bench supply. And I'll show you the circuit in a second, but I'm using a couple of resistors and a capacitor here to do this DC offset. Now, if I turn off the power supply, look at this, the image fades away. In fact, let's switch to something that's a little bit more obvious. There it is. Now, if I turn this back on, look at that. It gets bright, those scan lines go away. It now looks good. And when we turn off the power supply, it will fade away. I have to say as well, the sharpness is amazing. What we're looking at here is a resolution sweep. So these lines get closer and closer together and there is still definition in the lines all the way over on this side. And I can tell you if that little filter were in place, this would just be a solid gray mass. We would not see those lines. And here's my rough sketch. So video comes in, there's a 47 microfarad cap that I stuck there. We have ground down on this side with a 47K resistor and we have a 100K resistor up to B plus. Now, well, I have my bench power supply right now, but I will use the B plus in the monitor, which is about 10.9 volts. So I have the bench supply set to 11 volts right now, just for testing. And then this wire goes off into that board. Now, from my understanding, this arrangement with the cap and this resistor creates a bit of a low pass filter. So that could cause some high frequency roll off, which could potentially make this a little softer but I tested removing that resistor to ground and turning the power supply down. Otherwise it uh, kind of runs away. The voltage will slowly drift up. And while it's slightly brighter in this section, it's very minor. There's almost no noticeable difference. All righty, first things first, I'm gonna disconnect the positive from the video signal and I'm gonna install this cap. Next up, the 47K resistor that goes to ground. I'm just gonna install that right on the back here. I have the cap right there on this side of the board and that's the white wire that will be the video input. I need to connect that to this lead of the cap and I'm gonna put some heat shrink on it. And then we have a zip tie just to hold everything together. But we're not quite done in this section. I need to find uh, the 10.9 volt B plus, which literally might be that pin right there, B, and then I can attach this 100K resistor to it. Okay, I just plugged the power in the TV. Let's power this up and see if that is indeed. So this is ground over here. Oh, that's 11.5. So that's actually, I think, coming from the power supply. I'm just gonna use this 11.5 volt rail since it's right here, it's the most convenient. So the oscilloscope is connected. I don't have anything hooked up to the video input. Let's see what voltage we see when I turn on the set. All right, so we're getting about 2.7 volts or so. I think that should be fine. I don't know why this is jumping around a bit though. Maybe I need to hook a video source up to it. And when we look at the oscilloscope, there is the signal coming in from the signal generator. So that looks normal, it's all around ground. And when I turn on the set, no change. 
So the TV is on right now, and yet it is still at the correct level. And when we turn around the set, there it is. It's looking good. Perfect, absolutely perfect. I'm ecstatic about this. And there's the convergence grid looking fantastic. Turn the brightness down. So switching through all the various test patterns, I'd say the only problem I'm seeing right now is maybe the video signal is a little too hot. And I'm wondering if that's because it doesn't have a 75 ohm resistor to ground that I need to add. Let me experiment around and see if I can get the picture a little less hot, a little less overdriven. And yes, the video signal needs a resistor and I'm holding one on place right now, 75 ohms between the center pin or the actual video signal and ground. And this needs to be on the other side of the capacitor, not right here on the board, but actually on the back where the connector is, where the video cable will plug in. And that makes everything look a lot better on the set here, like the brightness and contrast work properly. Without this, I had to have the contrast knob turned all the way down um, otherwise it was just overblown. And this is the resistor in place. So uh, I put vid there, but this is actually the ground on the video signal coming in. And it also connects to ground on the set and a 75 ohm between the video there and this side here. And that's basically part of the voltage divider in the video signal that ensures termination and whatever correct levels. But it has to be connected on the left side of this 47 microfarad cap right here. Alrighty, so the next step is just to implement this on the back of the case so I can actually put this thing back together and plug in a video input into it. And there it is, there's the video input. Now if I could do this again, I would do a better job and, and center that. I do have a punch, I can't find it, I don't, I don't remember where I put it. And I could have put a center punch, that way the drill bit wouldn't have wandered <laughs> over to one side. But being off center, won't cause any kind of issue. So uh, why don't we give this a test? Okay, let's hit the power. Test pattern generator is connected to the back. We'll try some other sources in a second. This set does take a little bit of time to warm up. It's a bit interesting, uh, but there it is. Nice. All right, so let me put this TV set back together. Okay, we have the Apple IIc out and it's connected to the monitor, which is on right now. The focus set manually, let's turn it on. All right. Hopefully I have the camera in focus. I gotta say, it looks pretty amazing. It is so sharp. Now there it is with Attack of the Petsky Robots and it's pretty amazing how absolutely sharp this monitor is. It's fantastic for a five inch screen. I can't really show what it looks like with the RF, but I can tell you it's gonna be very, very soft. And I think a lot of it has to do with this filter that I took out. So even if I had left it RF, just removing this probably would have sharpened it up dramatically. Now there is one issue with this set and you can kind of see it going on right here. The cathode drive on here, unfortunately is the type where the contents of what's on screen affects the overall brightness of the set. Very common for black and white TVs to be like this. I'm assuming it had to do with maybe making it easier to see what was on television, but it's not ideal for a computer monitor. And here's what I mean. When I reset the computer, this text is quite bright, but if we fill up the screen with something white, so if I go to text, you'll notice it'll be bright and it will get dim. There it is. It's a lot dimmer now. Now the camera might be adjusting, but overall it's a lot dimmer than it was. Now this has nothing to do with the capability of this CRT to produce a good image. I could turn up the knobs on the back of the TV and then it would look better. But then the problem is if I make this screen look bright by let's see, turning up the contrast. Okay, so there we go. That looks nice and bright, still very sharp. If we clear the screen, now what happened is the background looks kind of gray. And I, sorry, I turned up the, uh, the, con the brightness control to get that. So if we turn this down so it's not like that, then if we fill up the screen again, it's still kind of dim. Now this is completely to do with the design of the cathode drive in this set. And it's not a fault, it's just the way it's designed. It's just not a very fancy design. Now, if we go PR number three here, now if I adjust the brightness so that it is at the correct level and it's not overdriving, 
that is amazing. It is 100% clear and readable. For a five inch TV set not designed to display high resolution text, this is coming out absolutely fantastically. So am I pleased how this thing turned out? Absolutely. Let's switch to some regular video from this VCR and see how that looks. So there's the VCR menu that we did see before hooked up through the RF input and it looks super amazing. You do see the dot crawl happening. That is normal because that's the color signal showing through in the Luma. That's just the way a composite NTSC works. They pop in a tape into the VCR and there it is, a certain movie with airplanes in it from the 80s, looking pretty good. And I have rewound the tape and uh, we're just starting at the beginning here. So there you can kind of see that thing I was talking about where the match was bright and the background get darker and there it just did it there. So it's, it's not just the Apple II, it happens on everything. But again, that is exactly how these sets work. And with that, I'm gonna end this video here. This little TV has this little video input on the back now, and it is so much more useful to me now because I can just carry this around so easily and use it as a little set for computers. Even though it's got that inaccurate brightness on the screen or whatever, that's just part of the design, and it's still useful for just showing text and stuff like that. Anyhow, I'm really happy how this turned out. I think it makes this thing so much more usable, so you'll probably see it on the bench in the future. I wanna thank the original viewer who sent this in. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. I'd have to go check my spreadsheet for that. And I wanna thank my patrons. Their names are scrolling up the screen. The support to my channel means so much to me. If you wanna become a patron yourself, you can do so at the link in the description below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, all that other YouTube-y stuff. And uh, don't forget to check out my second channel. There is all sorts of interesting stuff there. So I guess that's it. So stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.